Good morning children. In this video, we are going to discuss the short answer type questions which I have provided you in the form of assignments. Okay, so this is just the, uh, like the example point of view. If you have written by your own way, that is more preferential. So let's get started. We have already completed uh, till question number 10. So here in this assignment, we are going to start with question 11. Okay, the first question is name any three diseases transmitted through vectors. Fine. Any three diseases that is transmitted through vectors and you guys are already aware that what are the vectors? These are the animals that carry the diseases from an infected person to the healthier or the normal one. So as you all know, there was a lot of vectors. So the most simplest one is the mosquitoes. Malaria is transmitted by mosquitoes. Rabies is transmitted by mad dogs, okay, and elephantiasis is transmitted by mosquitoes again. Uh, apart from this, you also have a knowledge of dengue, chicken gunia, japanese encephalitis. So, all these are also transmitted through certain vectors, specifically the mosquitoes. So, this is going to be the answer for question number 11. Moving forward, we have question 12. Explain the giving reasons. Okay, so here you need to uh, give the reasons that why it is so. The first one that is the A part is balanced diet is necessary for maintaining healthy body. Okay, so what do you think that uh, why this balanced diet? We, we children already all the time emphasizing on certain balanced diet, uh, healthy diet, nutritious one. So why it is important? For, to maintain a healthy body. So as you know that force is the uh, essential component for the growth and development or the, for the uh, like ensuring the normal functioning of the human body. And we always like wants a balanced diet. Balanced diet means what? That contains all the essential nutrients in the desired or required or appropriate quantity. Fine. Uh, it's like deficiency of any of the macro or micronutrient will lead to in the sort of certain disorder, discomfort or disability or disease as well. So balanced diet provides an appropriate amount of biomolecules. So biomolecules here we are concerning specifically about carbs that is carbohydrates, lipid, protein, vitamin, minerals. These are the biomolecules which are essential for our growth and body functioning. Imbalance in the diet lead to many physical and physiological disorders as I have already told you that a proper way, a proper healthy diet is necessary to ensure the proper functioning of a body. Deficiency of any of the nutrients just like deficiency in the iron cause your anemia, deficiency in the vitamin B, vitamin C causes scurvy and we have a lot of deficiency diseases. So for that to maintain a healthy body it must be ensured that we always get a balanced diet. Balanced diet means what? That contains all the essential nutrients in the appropriate or we can say in the desired quantity. Fine. The uh, B part of this question is health of an organism depends upon the surrounding environmental conditions. So here the question is like the reason you have to give that how the health of an organism is depending upon the surrounding environmental condition. So as you know that health according to the WHO's definition is defined as the complete physical, mental and social well-being and comfort Health is always dependent on our surroundings. Uh, if you children remember, then we have uh, studied about physical, individual and communities issues. Okay, so in that aspect, we have discussed that how the community, how the surrounding is going to impact the health of a person. Fine. So, and if the environment is unhygienic, we get a disease. Obviously, we have a lot of uh, like infectious disease roaming around us. And if the environment is really unhygienic, then it it have a chance that we may develop all those diseases. We get cold and cough in rainy and winter season. Our environmental conditions are very important for being healthy. Okay. As you know that there were certain airborne diseases, waterborne diseases. Okay. Some diseases may be transmitted by direct contact. Some may be by infected, indirect or contaminated food, water, all this stuff. So just to ensure a proper health, the surrounding environmental conditions should be hygienic. Okay, uh, the community uh, should be uh, like live in a harmonious uh, uh, way so that the, uh, the phys complete physical, mental and social uh, psych, uh, aspect of a human body should be maintained. The C uh, part of this question is 
our surrounding area should be free of stagnant water first of all yahan pe children stagnant water ka matlab hota hai thehra hua pani the water which is accumulated near your home near your working space or in some of the stuff that is known as stagnant water theek hai and you guys also know that stagnant water is very polluted isn't it it is polluted it having a lot of vectors a lot of uh, disease causing organism developing in that particularly a lot of species of microorganism that is pathogenic in nature so that is meant by stagnant water so stagnant water is a breeding ground for mosquitoes okay so as i have told you breeding ground that is the most suitable uh, it's like environment for mosquitoes to breed mosquitoes spread many diseases just like malaria dengue elephantiasis chikungunya etc in order to stop the spread of these diseases our surrounding should be free of stagnant water and children that is the reason we always make a check that uh, uh, the areas in which we live we do not have a stagnant uh, like water the water that is there we feel in the water uh, like coolers and all those stuff we tend to change them regularly or on a period periodic basis fine and uh, it's like uh, uh, if you uh, if you have a uh, awareness about your surrounding then um, uh, the all those workers who are it's like engaged in this cleaning activity they make sure that there was no stagnant water just like in the tires or in the empty uh, uh, vessels or in the any of the stuff the stagnant water always going to remove or change periodically periodically clear the deep uh, part of this question is social harmony and good economic conditions are necessary for good health okay social harmony the two key points over here is social harmony and good economic conditions so children human beings are social organisms that means what we can't live in isolation as i've told you in the classes we live in the different localities and environments so in order to lead a healthy life we have to keep our environment clean we need hygienic food and lead a healthy life which depends on our economic conditions children as i have told you a uh, good economic conditions ensures all the basic medicinal facility all the high nutritious food okay we often encounter diseases in order to get the treatment we need the money and our economic status should be strong to afford the treatments so this you can relate that those who are people do not those who are poor do not have the proper money they do not have the access of good hospitals and they do not have the access of uh, uh, like costly medicines and all those stuff so children to ensure a proper health a uh, good harmonious relationships in the social context and a good economic condition that is in terms of monetary uh, conditions should be good so that we get the uh, we have the access of all the basic uh, facilities all the medicinal facilities and the basics to the uh, like access to the nutritional food that is required to maintain a healthy body so moving forward we having question number 13 what is a disease and how many types of disease have you started give example fine so here in this question the answer should be that each organ of an organ system has a specific function to do as you know that heart is having their specific function kidney having their different functions lungs have their different function so each organ in the is like in the case of organ system has their specific function to perform when this functioning changes or disrupts it leads to a condition known as disease fine so these changes result in some adverse effect on the body's normal functioning and the changes observed are called signs and symptoms of the disease and children that is the reason that every disease has its specific signs and symptoms okay so this we have already discussed in the class if we talk about types of diseases then we have acute the first uh, one is like these diseases last for a very short period of time and uh, these do not have the severe effect on the body just because they were for a very short period of time so these are called the acute one example is common cold coming to the next we have chronic disease so as we compare chronic with the acute so chronic disease that is something last for the longer period of time even sometimes till the even sometime life as a, as a lifetime disease and these having very severe effect on the body example elephantiasis cancer and all those stuff third is infectious disease so disease which are caused by microorganisms are called infectious disease 
दिस डिजीज कैन स्प्रेड फ्रॉम वन पर्सन टू अनदर बाय वेक्टर्स और बाय अदर मीन्स सच एज फूड एंड वॉटर एग्जाम्पल इज टाइफॉइड एंड डेंगी ऑल दो स्टाफ सो दीज diseases which are caused by the microorganisms or the vectors transmitted from a sick person to the healthier one or to the normal person via the uh, uh, to the medium of air contaminated contaminated air or we have we can say contaminated food contaminated water so these are called known these diseases are known as infectious disease and the most common example is your typhoid or big examples and children this is just an example typhoid moving forward last the other category we have is the non infectious one diseases that are not caused by infectious agents so in the class we have already discussed that what are the infectious agent okay all the microorganism that uh, that carries the path the disease causing pathogens or that act as a vectors are the infectious agents even sometimes mosquitoes okay so these causes vary their causes vary but they are not external causes like microbes that can spread in the community instead they are mostly internal non infectious causes so sometimes children what happen that there might be develop certain discomfort or disability in our own organ system or maybe some tissue some organ is not functioning properly we have a certain nutritional deficiency that is something not transmitted from the sick person to the healthier person let's take an example just like maybe have a deficiency of vitamin c so i will be going to suffer by scurvy not you because in my body there is a deficiency of vitamin c so all these diseases which are not transmitted from a sick person to the healthier one just because they are caused by the internal causes uh, maybe the malfunctioning of the organs maybe certain nutritional uh, or micro or macro nutrients deficiency okay maybe sometimes it caused due to stress and all those stuff so these type of diseases Uh, which having all these uh, things is termed as non infectious diseases okay and the example which i have taken over here is the hypertension or high blood pressure high blood pressure low blood pressure is the something that is not transmitted from a sick person to the healthier one or the person who have this high blood pressure disease or you can say that discomfort is that clear so these are the four important types keep in mind that acute is something for the shorter period chronic is for something longer period infectious transmitted from a sick person to the healthier one and non infectious is not transmitted that is, uh, causes may be internal fine so these are the four important types and children i have just written one example over here you have a lot of examples ample of examples are there so you can write it down there was no hard and fast rule clear So children in this video have just uh, completed till question number 13 okay because uh, this time is not going to permitted so in the next subsequent video uh, we going to start with question 14 till question 21 okay so that's all for this video in the case if you have any doubt you can ask in the comment section below and uh, just make sure that you have completed all the question that is there in the assignment in the case you have missed a question or do you do not know how to write it for that i have just given you the sample answers fine so thank you so much for listening have a great day thank you